All right, what is up today, guys? Uh, we are here at Bowers Mansion, and uh, we're gonna learn a little bit about this place today. Um, this is what the wealthy of Nevada lived like during the gold and silver booms of the 1800s. And uh, this place has been kept up over the years. And we're gonna learn about its story. I'm just waiting for my friend Mackenzie to come here, and then we're gonna check this place out. What's up, you guys? I'm gonna let my pal Prospector Pete. Uh, Prospector Pete. Uh, tell the story on this one. So if you want to go on adventures with me, hit that subscribe button and enjoy the video. Article read from theculturetrip.com, written by Lisa Rogers. The history of the Bowers Mansion is one of merriment and tragedy. Vast fortunes, big losses, psychics, and suffragettes, all ending with picnics and playgrounds. The mining boom that hit Nevada in the mid-19th century created fortunes, and in turn, those fortunes created some spectacular buildings, from the Nevada State Capitol Building to the Fourth Ward School. One of the finest is the Bowers Mansion, which became as the showplace home of the wealthy elite, and became a shared home for all Nevadans to enjoy. Located near Reno and Carson City, the Bowers Mansion is named for Allison Alley Orem Bowers and her third husband, Lemuel Sandy Bowers. Born in Scotland, Alley ran a boarding house and a laundry in the town of Gold Hill, Nevada. She was also known for having psychic abilities and offered fortune telling and crystal ball gazing along with their services in the way of food, clothing, and shelter. Some miners who didn't have cash gave Allie a piece of their mining claims instead, and through this, she accumulated a fortune. As an impoverished young woman, Bowers claimed to have had a vision of herself living in a mansion, and she used her new wealth to make that dream come true. She had bought the land years earlier with her second husband, kept it in the divorce, and now decided that she and Sandy would build the most elegant home the territory of Nevada had ever seen. The Bowers spent over a year traveling Europe, spending $100,000, about $2.5 in today's money, buying furniture and art for their spectacular home. They also came home with an adopted daughter, Margaret Persia. Once finished, the mansion had unique furnishings, marble statuary, and doorknobs and hinges of solid gold and silver from the Bowers' own mines. Of course, no boom lasts forever. In the combination of financial extravagance and the declining of the mining industry hit the Bowers' family hard. Sandy died in 1868, and Margaret Persia passed away in 1874. Allie was forced to turn her mansion into a boarding house, and frequently hosted picnics for residents and other local organizations. She was also an early supporter of women's suffrage and hosted balls and parties to support the right to vote. However, Allie was finally forced to sell her home in auction in 1876. She wound up as an itinerant psychic, telling fortunes in Nevada and California before she died in 1903. The mansion remained a public resort and changed hands several times. In 1946, the mansion was purchased by Washoe County with the assistance of the Reno Women's Civic Club and public donations. 20 years later, the property was updated and renovated. Today, it's Bowers Mansion Regional Park. The home has been restored and refurbished with historic pieces donated by Nevada residents. The grounds contain hiking trails, picnic areas, spring-fed swimming pools, a playground, an amphitheater, and more.
So we're walking up on what they believe was the stable house. I guess they really didn't know what it was used for. Um, but they think it was a carriage house and maybe later it was a, uh, a garage. But now they've turned it into a men and women's bathroom. I got some old farming tools here. And this was the old root cellar where they would have stored things uh, through the winter and summer. This was the Comstock mine. It's kind of how it was uh, set up. Different horseshoes. Talks about the Washoni tribe. Okay, so now we are going to walk up this hill to the family cemetery. Okay, so here is the family cemetery. Uh, that is the daughter, that's the husband, and then that's uh, Allie. But they spelled their name different up here and they had the years wrong. Or maybe they had it wrong down here, I don't know. Um, but yeah, rock wall behind it, and then the house is back down there. Prospector.